Major Whitaker, United States Navy. I served on active duty from 1967 to 1973. For three of those years, I flew electronic reconnaissance missions over Northeast Asia and Southeast Asia, Vietnam. My squadron VQ-1 was based at the Republic of Vietnam Air Force facility in Da Nang, Vietnam. As a lieutenant in electronic warfare, I had a crew of 30 plus. We provided vital intelligence to support the war effort in Vietnam, as well as early warning for air-to-air -air and or surface-to-air attacks on U.S. forces. During my tour of duty, over 55 men were killed. 31 were killed when a MiG-21 from North Korea shot down an EC-121 over the Sea of Japan. Only two bodies were ever found. This was an unprovoked attack against an unarmed reconnaissance aircraft. An additional 22 men were killed when a second EC-122 crashed on landing in Da Nang. And we had additional men who were killed when we were attacked on the ground in Da Nang, especially during Tet season. Also, our troops were exposed to Agent Orange, a toxic defoliant used around all the air bases in Vietnam. We had loss and sorrow every day. We only hoped that we'd make it out alive and return home to the safety and comfort of our families and communities. My reality was I returned to a hostile environment. Many Americans did not support the war effort in Vietnam and took it out on the returning vets. They shunned us, spit upon us, and called us baby killers because of the massacre at My Lai. It would be over 40 years before I would hear anybody say, thank you for your service. My exposure to Agent Orange resulted in a serious battle with skin cancer. I had over 12 surgeries on my face. Most of the left side of my face was removed. And to this day, I get examined every six months and frequently have interventions, surgical interventions for minor issues related to skin cancer. I came home defeated and depleted. I was physically, mentally, and emotionally depleted. I was not the person I was when I left. I had no idea who I was or how I could fit in. I could not move forward and I could not go back. I drank every day and I fought suicide every single day for the decade of the 70s. I left for Vietnam as a closeted gay man. It was the 60s. It was not okay to be gay. Not okay to be gay with my family or in my community. I married my high school sweetheart and we had three children while we were overseas. I loved my wife and I loved my children, but I was living a lie. I now have a family crisis, an identity crisis, as well as PTSD and physical ailments. Wow. Two profound things happened. Number one, I told you I came home and I was defeated and depleted. My defenses were depleted. I could no longer live a lie. I could no longer hide. If I continued to live that lie, the inevitable would happen. So I had to change. Number two, the men and women that serve and fight, at least ideologically, fight for freedom, for democracy, for the right to stand up and be heard and live as the person you are. We must continue that fight. We must respect that freedom that all of us fought for. Freedom is not a billboard. It's life and death to some of us. I would go back to Vietnam just to fight for the freedom to stand up and be heard as the person I am. We have put down the weapons, we have disembarked from the warships and the war planes, but we must use that freedom and that power to vote. Vote for candidates who will support individual rights. Candidates who will support the rights of gay men and women to march down the street with their heads held high and proud. The rights of transgender brothers and sisters to live the life they were meant to have. The rights of women to make their own decisions about their health and welfare. And the right to ensure that on every day black lives matter. I stand before you as an openly gay man. I have children who love me, a family that's proud of me, and a community that is loving and supportive of me as I am. I have the best the world has to offer because I chose to live and I chose to live as the gay man I am. It has been over 50 years since these incidents happened and I have a magnificent history. I have a magnificent history as a father, a brother, a son, a friend, a coworker, and a shoulder to cry on. 
and soon I will be a husband. And now, with this award, this recognition that you give me, as you say thank you for your service, I can't wait to write the next chapter. <laughs>